uh, for relationships. Is it always, do you always attract the opposite sign or is it uh, more likely to deal with the elements in your chart that uh, makes the difference in a relationship when you attract somebody? People, they don't necessarily always attract the opposites. So like uh, you, you will hear people say, oh, all the Aries will be attracted to Libra. Well, maybe not. Neither will it always work that all the Aries are attracted to other Aries. Okay. So it actually is, it will be decided by the overall energies in your chart. Because uh, in Vedic astrology, we have uh, the sun sign, we have the moon sign. And we have like seven other planets, including Rahu and Ketu. So uh, either ways, whichever form of astrology we need to discuss, we always have many planets, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten planets. Some systems uh, have like many planets. So overall, ultimately, the chart will decide. So for example, if a person has uh, too many planets in fire signs, like fire signs are... Aries, then we have Leo and then Sagittarius. So then sometimes the person may feel that uh, he or she is very good at initiating things. So starting projects. But then if the person does not have prominent planets in earth signs like Taurus, Virgo or Capricorn, the person will feel, oh yeah, I, I can kickstart things, but I tend to give it up after some time. Now, this is this is a trait. So then this person, if he's a man, he may want to find a girl who has like, you know, the ardhi traits more or he may be unconsciously attracted to, to a girl who has ardhi traits, you know, who has a prominent moon in Taurus or, you know, moon in Capricorn or a moon in Virgo. He'll be, he will be unconsciously uh, or rather subconsciously attracted because... He will see that he makes a decision. Hey, let's go here. Uh, and then this the girl will say, okay, we are here. Now we can do this. Now we can do that. So uh, if he goes out with her as a friend, then he will certainly feel that what I am missing in myself that I find in this girl. Okay. <laughs> and it will be very uh, subconscious. He won't realize. Same is with the girl. If the girl... Uh, if the girl has too many planets in, uh, I, I would say, fire signs, then uh, she can have considerably very high masculine traits. And then she can be attracted to a man who is a bit feminine because then she feels uh, complete that she can experience both the energies. So I would say uh, it depends on uh, your where, where your sun is placed, where your moon is placed, your ascendant lord is placed. And the overall chart and at the end, the second factor is what are you looking uh, for? So, for example, if a person has uh, prominent planets in the trines, like, for example, we know trines are the fifth and the ninth houses. So, if there are watery planets, like a person has moon in the fifth house or Venus in the ninth house, then the person is looking for more... Uh, venusian or moon like energy in the spouse because uh, that then the person feels kind of complete because the lagna the ascendant the first house is who the person is so if a person has moon in the first house he himself will be very emotional and if a moon if a man has moon in the fifth house then he's likely to get attracted to a lady who has moon in the first house because the f he has moon in the fifth so he's looking for ladies who have a prominent moon and a uh, planet in the ascendant makes it uh, very prominent so if a lady has moon in the first and a man has moon in the fifth then you may get attracted to that person so i would say uh, it's not a black and white answer you know that uh, taurus will always attract libra but it depends on who the person is and what the person is looking and uh, that when it comes to meeting your marriage partner, um, is there going to be repeating patterns? Because obviously nowadays you have people that are married once or twice or three times. Uh, so is it going to be a very similar scenario? From what I've noticed from uh, the charts that I've done, that it seems like when the people tell me about 
the uh, what happens with uh, when they meet their partner, the particular their marriage partner. It seems to be a very similar scenario. Why is that the case, or do you see that as well with your experience? So we have dashas like in uh, Western astrology, there are transits of planets. In Vedic astrology, we have something called as Mahadasha. Mahadasha. So a dasha is like a time period of a planet. So for example, Venus dasha is for 20 years. And uh, there are three types of three levels of dashas. One is Mahadasha. Maha is like great or big. So Venus Mahadasha is for 20 years. For everybody, it will be 20 years. And then within that, you have sub-periods. So that is a major period. And within that, you have sub-periods like Mercury, for example. So Mercury, so inside Venus, you will have Mercury. That will be like two and a half years approx. So now the thing is, if if you if you have the Mahadasha of a planet, so suppose you are running Venus Mahadasha and Venus is somehow indicating marriage in your chart. Now, how he does it, that is a different question. But so let's assume he does indicate marriage. And now let's assume in your chart you have like three other planets which also indicate marriage. Because for critical events like marriage, which does not happen every other day, <laughs> we at least need two or three planets indicating that strongly to happen in your life. So now if a person is running the major period of Venus and then First minor, first sub period is again of Venus. So it is Venus, Venus, three, three and a half years. Then the person has Venus Sun, Venus Moon. So now let's assume Moon is a planet which is also positive for marriage. So then when Venus Moon comes after four and a half, five years of the start of Venus Mahadasha, <clears throat> the person may meet somebody similar, may, may meet somebody with whom uh, he or she may want to get married. Uh, now, uh, suppose, uh, let's take a scenario where uh, after moon there is Mars Dasha and the person is unfortunately divorced, okay? So then after Mars there is Rahu and then there is Jupiter. So let's assume in Jupiter, again, there is a combination for marriage. Now, because Jupiter and moon are both natural benefits, so there will be some similarities in the cultural upbringing, similar language, similar values, similar age. Okay. So then you can say, oh, uh, this person is quite similar. So if you are from America, the, the, the person you met in moon can also be an American or a Canadian or a, a Britisher or somebody who speaks very good English. And in Jupiter also, the person could be an uh, Englishman. Okay. So then you can say it's similar. But now suppose the person has no marriage combination in Jupiter and after Jupiter Dasha, we have Saturn Antar Dasha which comes. Now, Saturn is not a natural benefit like Jupiter and Moon. It is a natural malefic. So if Saturn is now indicating, it will indicate people who are from different caste, creed, community, religion, different uh, food, food habits, different clothing. Then you will say, oh, the, my first uh, husband was American and the second was uh, from Iran or from India or from some other place. So then it will be different. And if it is Mercury, the person can be younger than you in age. So the planetary, the planet imparts the natural characteristics to the person. So for example, Mercury represents people who are young. So... If Mercury is in your ninth house, for example, and you go to a university, you will see you and your professor, they, you will not have much age difference because that person will be very young compared to the other professors. Not that he's younger than you. Okay. Uh, and if you go to a college in uh, Saturn, when Saturn is in your ninth, then that professor will be very old. Like, you know, if other professors are in their 40s, 50s, this person will be in your 60s, you know. So that's how it will be. So I would say it depends on the natural signification of the planets. And if the planets who are bringing the spouse are natural benefits like uh, Jupiter, Moon, Mercury, Venus, then you will feel that, oh, yeah, I'm all the time I'm meeting Americans. Okay. <laughs> but suppose in your chart, you only have marriage possibility in the malefics like Saturn, Rahu and Ketu. 
then you will always feel, oh, I never attract Americans. I always attract non-Americans. Okay. <laughs> and sometimes people have, okay, in their chart, uh, Mercury, Venus and Moon are indicating marriage and Saturn Rahu Ketu is not indicating. So the, so the lady, we, the man may think, oh, all my partners are always being Americans, you know, or or if only Saturn Rahu Ketu indicates, then the person will think, oh, I never meet people from my community. It's always some other religion, you know. But mostly it can be mixed, you know. So for people, it can be like, okay, Jupiter, Mercury indicates and Saturn Ketu indicates. So depending on which Dasha you are running, you may meet a person who is similar to your culture or different. Okay, so I would say it, it would depend <laughs> on that. But yeah, one thing is for sure, uh, in irrespective of which dasha you will run, you, you, you have a horoscope which is static. It does not change. The dashas will keep changing. The dashas will keep uh, change, keep you, they will give you new focus areas. But your inherent chart will not change. So, as I said before, if a person has moon in the fifth house, so then uh, even if moon dasha is indicating uh, that he will have a girlfriend or relationship, so then he will be attracted to a woman who have moon or Venus in their first house. You know, So that is how you can, so that will not change. Even if the dashas are different, but that will not change. Okay, so the chart kind of tells you what kind of people you are inherently attracted to. And the dashas will tell you uh, the cultural similarities. Because if a man has moon in the fifth, but suppose uh, Saturn is indicating that he will have a wife. So then he will attract a lady during his Saturn dasha who will have a prominent moon but will be elder to him. Okay. So that is how it will play out. And if it is Mercury... Mercury Dasha is indicating. So he will attract a girl in Mercury Dasha uh, who, uh, who also has a prominent moon. But because it is Mercury, she will be very younger to him. She could be like 10 years younger. <laughs> so that, that's how you will uh, know. The attraction, uh, like obviously the fifth house is the house of romance, but then the seventh house is the house that you would, you know, look at for marriage. So you're obviously talking about a lot of about the fifth house. So for the initial relationship, the fifth house would be the playing a factor. But in after you're dating that person, then you would look at the seventh house or the ninth house, depending on uh, if there was a divorce or marriage and so forth. Is that the always debated by the astrologers? Like they say, the first marriage is seventh house, then the second marriage is the ninth house because it's third from the seventh. But the problem with that idea is, uh, suppose I use the same logic for children. So the first child is my fifth house. Then you say, okay, so the second child will be the sibling of the first child. So sibling is the third. So third from the fifth, if you go five, six, seven, it is like seventh house. So does it mean that if I have the second child, my marriage house will again open up? Will I have a divorce and will I remarry somebody? Well, I so I have practically not seen that working. So in my experience, I have always seen bang on. If it is the first marriage or 10th marriage, I, I don't care which marriage it is, the number. But anytime a planet is indicating the second house or the seventh house, or the 11th house, then the marriage takes place. It doesn't matter. It is the first or the third or fifth marriage. Now, of course, that is debatable. Uh, what uh, brought the, sp who, which planet brings the spouse and all, you know, so you can say the fifth house, sometimes the third house, sometimes the eighth house, the 12th house can bring in some love romance in your life. But for marriage, it is very, very, very clear. There is no doubt on it the second second house is the house of family and the seventh house is the house of marriage it is like the prime house of marriage it is the most important house and the eleventh house of course because it is the house of fulfillment of desire and uh, sometimes what happens a person has a very strong fifth house but the person a person has a very bad second house and a very bad seventh house 
so then what happens is the person has a very good uh, love life romantic life but then the moment he is thinking of marriage <laughs> something or the other is going wrong in his life you know so if the seventh lord is in debility then you don't you you kind of feel you cannot be a good good husband or a good wife Some, somehow i've seen people feel this inherently they feel oh maybe uh, what if that person marries somebody else after marrying me then what will happen to me so the planetary dignity will show your confidence so if the seventh lord is badly placed you have a problem you lack confidence in yourself not uh, for, for the institution of marriage or if the second lord is badly placed then you may get married but you will always kind of feel you know that oh yeah he's there i am there she's there but you will not feel like a family <laughs> for some reason you will feel you are married but you will not feel like a family it's very it's bizarre sometimes because people can have very weird combinations like they, they can have a strong fifth house a strong seventh house and a bad second house then they feel now if the fifth and the second are good then you will have a oh, good good love life good good family life but somehow when you both of you are sitting together if the seventh house is not good you'll feel oh why am i married to this person <laughs> but then because the second house is good you will have good family relations with in-laws with children and all this you will feel i have a family okay so people uh, nowadays uh, they will not have some they, they will not have like you know the seventh house is excellent and the second house is like terrible it, it won't be like that you will always see some people have some problems in their fifth house they have something good in their seven some problem in the second you know so <laughs> it is always like a a mixture and that is what you have to kind of decode and see uh, but if the question is only of relationships then the fifth house eighth house and the twelfth house of course and then for marriage it's clear the second seventh and eleventh and among the three if even two are good i have seen the marriage survives if out of three two of them are very badly placed uh then I have seen one of the two cases where either they get separated or they are just married formally and there's no relationship. So it's like a, officially they are married, <laughs> but, uh, but they lack feelings. Uh, there is no connection and it's just like a formality. <laughs> so yeah, that's how in your date of birth also we can see a lot of things here. So for example... If somebody has the number 2 and 6 and 7 in their date of birth, then the person may be more interested in the love life, love romance. If a person has the number 3, then the person is more interested in family. So, then if a person has number 3, so suppose somebody is born on 1st of March, for example, then... Even if the horoscope is a bit not supporting the marriage, the person will still stay married. Because uh, the date of birth is indicating this person wants to have a family. But if uh, the person has a lot of, you know, like 267, like the person is born on 26 July, or the person is born on um, 6 July 1992, something like that. <laughs> then the person is very much emotion driven you know he's uh, he or she is like you know wanting love attention you know like uh, something new all the time and then then if the chart is a bit bad then it's like fire it's like you know two fires are coming and it's like a blast then there is divorce okay so we we use astrology and also numerology uh, by that we know and also in numerology the number seven is like a glue glue is something which keeps two people together so if somebody has seven in their date of birth they will they will uh, refrain from breaking the marriage they may not want a family but they will they will think 10 times before breaking not only the spouse relationship anything you know like their friends or colleagues you know 
so then you know that they want to maintain long term relationships whoever has seven in their date of birth and would then, the seven also be uh as far as like if you added up for a life path like would that uh, be the, the, the destiny number yes yes okay all if right you add, add the date of birth or it could be your basic number also like if you are born on uh, 7th or 25th or 16th even then it can apply <clears throat> So if seven is there uh, and the person is asking, uh, will there be a will there be separation? Then I would say, well, there could be separation or there could not be, but you certainly don't want to be separated. And most of the times the person says yes. <laughs> and what you will al also see if a person has seven, even if they are divorced, they will still be good friends with their ex-wife. Or um, it could sometimes be problem also because they, they may be good friends with their ex girlfriends also. <laughs> this is <laughs> so. Whenever I see the number seven, and uh, if sometimes uh, a man is asking me, "Oh, this is the lady's chart," you know, I'm I'm dating her from like the last two years. I want to get married. Would you recommend? So then, if I see that the married life is very good, then I'm like. Uh, happy because then I see that uh, she will maintain the marriage but if the married life is like on and off sometimes then there is a danger that she might contact her ex-boyfriend or ex-boyfriends <laughs> and then the, there could be some further problems so so I would say yeah it, it depends so if seven is there and it is there in a good way if astrology supports it is great it's thumbs up and if astrology is indicating too many affairs then uh, the number seven can wreak havoc because whoever has seven somehow people don't want to leave them for some reason <laughs> so so it's like nobody is wanting to leave you even if they have left you they are still thinking about you so <laughs> it is a bit problematic uh, for the husband or for the wife you know for that person it's great but for the spouse it's problematic so when there is seven i am like i i need to check the astrology chart in a very serious way because it can go either ways and if the person has two or six as i said then if there is indication of separation or divorce it is like 100 percent guaranteed it, because for them it is like you know anything goes bad they they are like ah oh, i don't want this you know <laughs> so, and and if number three is there in the date of birth then this person is like no i i i took the vow of marriage and i should be married and even if this person uh, has attraction for some other person the person is able to control that because three is the number of morals in numerology uh, and also in astrology, if somebody has a strong fifth house or a strong Jupiter, they have a greater probability to say no to temptations. Okay, so I guess it's a jugglery of both the sciences. <laughs> you have a very strong attraction to them, like to the point where you feel like you met them in a past life, like where you know them when you first meet them. What? Why is that in the chart or in numerology? What can cause that? What can cause that very strong uh, awareness? Scene is uh, a person. So suppose there's a man uh, and he meets a girl, and he's like, when he meets her, he feels, oh, I, I know this person from many lifetimes. Okay, and this is not the first time I have met this person. And this can hold true for general people also, not only re love re love relationships. It could be with any normal person. You meet that person and suddenly you feel, oh, I, it feels I know you from a long time. No? So for that, we need to check like two planets, especially we need to check the sun because the sun in Vedic astrology is the natural Atma Karaka. It is the significator of the soul. So if that, if the girl, so if a man has sun in a particular sign, and uh, he meets a girl who also has a similar placement of the sun or in trines to the boy's sun. So, for example, if the boy has sun in Aries, so trines to that is uh, Leo and Sagittarius. 
So if the girl will have a son in Leo or Sagittarius or even in Aries, then he can get a feeling that I know this person from before. But along with that, if the person has like, you know, moon in fifth house, as I said, and then that girl also has moon in first house. So then he's like, oh, I am also attracted to this person. And I also know this person. And sometimes uh, in the chart, the Atma Karaka is uh, not the sun uh, because the Atma Karaka is the planet with the highest degree. So your Venus may be like, you know, in 25 degrees. So your Venus is the Atma Karaka. So if your Venus and her Venus is in trines to each other, you may feel this coming, you may feel that you know this person uh, from a very long time. And in numerology, especially uh, in numerology also we have dashas which means some numbers get activated uh, added uh, in your date of birth so if the number seven is activated because the se number seven in numerology shows past life connections and primarily it shows past life connections where that person has to give you something good in return Seven is the number of luck and uh, getting good things from others for free. Okay, so if so if you meet somebody when you have numerology seven, like it is running in your time period, you may stay with them or may not, but you won't be able to forget them for this lifetime. That's not possible because this person is not, you are not meeting this person for the first time this person came to give you like very strong lessons very important teachings and to improve you as a person you might have given some loan or something to that person in their previous life and they didn't pay you back so this life they have come to pay you the loan back with interest seven so like let's say both people have a life path seven they meet each other so you're yeah. seeing both of them that, that would be an awareness for both of them that, okay, wow, there is a past life connection. Or if the person yes. has seven somewhere in their birth, uh, in their their uh, their numerology, whether that be the, the month that yeah, they were born. Yeah, it could be both. Or in the yeah. year. Okay. It, it could be both. So, for example, if somebody just has seven, he's born in July. And he meets a girl who is born on the seventh, for example then also it will be very strong because now both of them have seven, not just one. So both will give something to each other, both. <laughs> and if somebody has a destiny seven, like you add everything, it's seven. And for the girl also, if you get seven, it's like, I mean, it, it, it's like uh, you, you guys are... You guys were destined to be together. Now, you may stay together or not. That's a separate discussion. But you you have, you have are not meeting this person for the first time. Also, you may meet them again in this lifetime. <laughs> or in your next lifetimes, you will meet this person. <clears throat> because uh, there are some numbers in numerology which show a lot of karmic... Uh, how do I say? A lot of karmic influences. Like for example, uh, you will see people whose mother, father get divorced. Especially in the, in the West, you will see it's uh, very frequent and now in India also it's happening. Mm -hmm. But you will see some of their children, they are okay with it. They're like, okay, my parents got divorced, that's fine. But for some people, they're like, oh, my parents got divorced. It was very traumatic. You know, it was... I couldn't imagine they will separate and all this. So why does that happen? Because if you have number three in your date of birth, anything good or bad that happens in the family will affect you very much. You will go crazy. You will lose your mind if something goes wrong. And if something good happens, oh, your brother is getting married, your sister is having children. Oh, wow, you're so happy. You are happy. Uh, but if there is no three, then you're like, okay, fine, very good. Good luck to my brother and sister, my parents, you know, they're having, uh, that's great, good for them. <laughs> you are also happy, but 
uh, you you behave normally you know it's like not an event in your life so why should i bother but if somebody has number three then they feel it's happening to them whatever is happening to their family is happening to them so if their brother is getting married they are equally happy or sometimes even more happy than the brother sometimes <laughs> So they will be very much involved with the family. So if if a if a man has number three and he's married, then he will be also very much involved with the in-laws. Now again, that could be good or bad. So if a person does not have three and the in-laws come and insult that person, hey, what are you doing? This is not correct. So then he will feel bad, but he will be least bothered. Within like two, three days, he's like, oh, I've forgotten it. But then if you have three, oh, how can my father-in-law say like this to me? How can my mother-in-law say this to me? You know, I, I don't like this. So, uh, and even in astrology, you can uh, see if a person has a very strong moon, the interactions with the family is very important. A strong Jupiter is very important. Jupiter is the significator of the family. So if a person has Jupiter in the first, fifth or ninth, Family is very, very, very important to them. For them, everything is like a family. Okay. And added to that, if they have number three, it is like a, it's like a double whammy. You know, it's like uh, the person is too much thinking what my father is doing, what is his health, you know, what my mother is doing, what he is doing, she is doing. So the, that's how it is, you know, depending on the chart and depending on the date of birth, we can tell... Uh, if the person has karmic relationship and the more uh, the karma and especially if both of them have complementary negative numbers then my god it is like one hell of a karmic baggage for example if a man has the number eight like in numerology number eight and four are the numbers of trouble universal trouble so if a person has, if a man has number eight, one time, single eight, uh, and then he does not have four, but now the girl is born in April. So she has four. <laughs> and then both meet each other. It's like, it is like a roller coaster. <laughs> because because the, the man is not having the four energy which she's bringing now four is like all problems of life you four is like you know you want to go to the shop you go and they'll say oh we don't have this come tomorrow so it's like you need a second attempt on this so then he will be frustrated hey what the heck is going on in my life why do i need to do everything twice why <laughs> because that's the karma of the girl. And then number eight is the number of defamation or not getting respect in society or being bullied or being treated like an unwanted person. So then this lady doesn't have four, uh, eight, she only has four. So she's used to the four energy, but she's not used to getting disrespected all the time. So then she gets married and she goes to the in-laws in India especially, and then she sees, oh, nobody is respecting my husband, so nobody respects me. And she's like, what? I can't stay here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, or, you know, the, the husband is not getting promotions because it's number eight and uh, eight is like, you know, delaying everything, okay? You will, uh, your colleague will get promoted to, uh, in three years, you will get promoted in like five years. So then she will feel, hey, your colleague got promoted. Why did you not get promoted? Okay. So it's like a roller coaster. Both are giving their, uh, the, the, both are giving each other their problems. Okay. <laughs> and on the other hand, if there are uh, some good numbers, they can also help. So for example, uh, if a man has number three and the lady has number seven, so that is like fantastic. It is like brilliant because then the man will be very much focused on the family, in-laws and all this. And because the lady has seven, uh, the man will gain luck through the lady also. The house, they tend to um, criticize their partners like, okay. Rahul I think in seven? Know. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Um, Venus in the seventh. Oh, I, I see. That, you know, the partner will, will criticize 
the other partner of like, well, you know, you need to like, you know, lose weight or like they're, they're criticized their features or they're saying like, you know, you need to do this, you do that, you know, maybe you need to, you know, uh, do this with yourself. You know, there's a constant like uh, nitpicking <laughs> about that yeah, part. I've seen. It will always be, you are very right. Yeah. Because Venus is fine. You know what is fine? Fine dining, fine bed. <laughs> like this, this is my mobile. This this mobile is maybe Mercury. But now if I throw this mobile and I buy an iPhone, then that iPhone is not Mercury anymore. Then that becomes Venus. So Venus is the only planet which can become any other planet. Your your Mercury can never become Venus. It's impossible. But Venus can become Mercury. Venus can become anybody, you know. Like uh, Venus can also become the moon. It's like the mother who is always posting the kids' photos in Instagram. She's actually Venus. So if a person is drinking alcohol, alcohol comes under Saturn. But he's drinking international, like branded. So, so he's experiencing Venus. Uh, a health freak is taking uh, orange juice. That is like mercury. But you add chia seeds, you add you know flax seed, you add uh, avocado, <laughs> you add almond milk, you add what? What was that? Stevia. <laughs> then that becomes. And that's Venus. It's no more Mercury. I mean. <laughs> so you want you want to take a car, you go from one place to the other. <laughs> you you buy a Mercedes, that's Venus. I mean, that's not car anymore. Car is anyways Venus. But <laughs> here you are spending like uh, $80,000 to buy a vehicle. And that's Venus. You know, this glass of water I have, this is the moon. But I go to the German store nearby and I get this, you know, uh, what is that sparkling water? It's like the soda is coming out. You know, it's like uh, branded and sealed. <laughs> then the water becomes Venus. So, <laughs> in, in fact, there was uh, one astrologer, his class I was attending one day. He's, he actually said... <laughs> Uh, people in astrology they keep debating who is the most important planet who is the boss of all planets they say oh maybe it's the sun because he's the king they say it's Rahu some say it is you know Mars whatever Jupiter they said no Venus is the king <laughs> because he's the only damn planet which can <laughs> which can behave like every other planet <laughs> And still uh, be as if he's not Venus. Okay, so but, but like, you know, a, a mother who is always taking photos of her baby and uploading in Instagram, people, people, what will they say? Oh, you're such a nice mother. You're such a caring mother. You know? <laughs> but she is actually behaving like Venus, which is, you know, showbiz, stardom and all this. So... Venus is uh, is very smart because he can behave like any other planet. He's like salt. When salt is there, you will not know. So yeah, Venus is the most important planet in my opinion in like Kali in this Kali Yuga as per the Vedic scriptures because people are having everything. The only thing they don't have is Venus. <laughs> So, when people say they don't have this, they don't actually mean they don't have that. They mean they don't have Venus in that form. Like, uh, like you know, you, you meet some boy who is uh, like 21, 22 years old. You tell him in India, oh, hey, it's time for you to get married. You know, the father, mother says, we'll search for some girls. And you talk to him after five years when he's 28. And he will say, oh, no, my mother, father couldn't find any girl. And then you call the mother and ask, hey, uh, auntie, did you not find a girl? He said, oh, we found 500 girls, but he rejected everybody because he didn't like the appearance. 
so basically he is not rejecting girls he is rejecting girls who are not like venus okay so people say i don't have money to buy a car now you can always buy a car like 2 3 thousand dollars some second hand car you can buy but what you will say no i don't have money to buy a car because you want to buy a car which is you know like 40 50 thousand dollars so everybody wants venus they they want they claim to want other things but Actually, they want Venus because Venus is the prime, it's the most shining planet in the sky. So everybody is wanting that shine and why that is happening these days more and more because uh, people are <laughs> not having anything higher. They don't have any spiritual goals, spiritual wisdom. And if you, uh, this is the last thing maybe I'll tell about Venus, which is very interesting. If you uh, read in our Vedic tradition, there are, you know, different planetary systems. Like the one we are situated currently where the earth is, that is the seventh planetary system. It is called as Bhuloka. So above that, above the Bhuloka, there is Bhuvar Loka. Then there is Swarga Loka. So the Swarga Loka and above one or two uh, swargaloka and swargaloka specially is known as the heavenly planets okay <clears throat> and every planet is actually signifying or ruling uh, something some planetary system so uh, the planet venus represents the swargaloka the heavenly realms so when people say in movies and novels that when you fall in love, you feel like you are in heaven. That's actually correct. Because the person is physically in the Bhuloka, but mentally he's in the Swargaloka. <laughs> but then above, above Swargaloka, there is Maharloka and there are different planetary systems, Jnana Loka, Tapaloka, and the topmost planetary system is Satya Loka. That is ruled by Jupiter. So, Anybody who wants to go beyond the Venusian influences, there is only one way you can do it. And that is through going in the domain of Jupiter. That does not mean you have to leave everything and run to the forest. No, it doesn't mean that. It means you have the necessary things that are required in your life. You have a good wife, children, car, husband, good house. You have everything. Nothing wrong with it. But... Your focus should be to elevate your consciousness spiritually and then luxuries are there or not there. <laughs> it won't matter for you. <laughs> Let's say the people have a really bad chart, but uh, one of the partners has a very good Jupiter. Would okay. that have the ability to save a marriage? Uh, if Now, when you say a bad marriage, it depends to what degree. So, so example, let's say let's say there's a bad sixth house, a bad second house, a bad seventh house. Oh, then that is but like the, extreme. But the other house. partner, but the other partner has uh, a good Jupiter, very good Jupiter, like a very exalted Jupiter, and they have a good second house, but their seventh house not so good. But if it has a good Jupiter, at least a good Jupiter, could that still potentially save a marriage? Like, like the glue. So when. <clears throat> See, I'll tell you what Jupiter is. People think Jupiter will automatically make things rosy for them. That's not the case, actually. Jupiter, what it does is, it tells, it, it imbibes some values in you. Like, for example, if, if your spouse is doing something wrong, wrong means not immoral, but she's doing some mistake. She's doing it again and again, one, two, three times. Then Jupiter will be like, if the husband has a strong Jupiter, he will be able to forgive this person. Because he will understand that, oh, she has some flaws, you know, but I also have flaws. She's also tolerating my flaws. So uh, why, can't, why, why can't I tolerate her flaws? Of course, that doesn't mean he will sit without doing anything. He will convey her and then he will be patient. Yeah, she will improve over time. You know, this area is not good, you know, whatever. So he gives you forgiveness. He gives you patience and all this. But that will only help you to some extent if you have a decent good karma for marriage, which means if your marital karma is extreme, it's like very negative, 
then uh, no matter how much forgiveness is there uh, so then what will happen if a person has a very bad marriage karma but a very strong jupiter so then also the person will be divorced but the person will take that as a lesson in his life and he will not hold grudges against the wife he will not harbor hatred he will not harbor animosity he will not speak badly against the wife once she leaves or she departs. He will say, oh yeah, we tried our best, but it didn't work. So we went on our roads. He will take everything, not only marriage, even if the career is bad. Let's say marriage is fantastic. Jupiter is fantastic. Career is terrible. So then also he... Whatever money he gets, he will be like, okay, let me try to stay within this. I won't have a big mansion. <laughs> so Jupiter, a good Jupiter, what is the sign that a person has a good Jupiter? The person can accept things in life. People say, oh, his Jupiter is good. He will have great life, you know, great this, great that. Well, not necessarily. But one thing will be for sure. This is a very big shortcut. I, I don't need to see your horoscope. I don't need to see anything. If there are things which you can accept, which are beyond your control, then your Jupiter is very strong. Because Jupiter is the belief that there is some higher power working. There is the God, universe, my karma. So then you kind of trust them. You Even if you don't have one hand, you are born with only one hand. You, If your Jupiter is very strong, you will never curse God, not one day. You will never ask God, even one day, that why did you make made me like this? And if you have a bad Jupiter, you, you are a... You are a multi-millionaire, you have a yacht and you are in, you know, Las, Las Vegas somewhere playing casino... And then you're like, oh God, only if you made me a billionaire. <laughs> because you can't accept. You have zero power to accept that you are not a billionaire. You may, you may have 200, 300 million. But you believe, oh, maybe I can go at max up to 500 million. You know, I, I, I'm still way far than becoming a billionaire. You know, it's just half. Even if I work for the next 500 years, I will still make it to 500 million. I will never make it to a thousand million. So you are cursing God all the time. Cursing destiny, cursing yourself, cursing your spouse, you know, cursing everybody. <laughs> so that's the easiest way to see. That is like the live. Your chart is live. Okay, it's not... Uh, recorded it's live it's like you know youtube live session it's happening you can see that person okay so anytime they have some uh, problem uh, you will see they will they will try their best uh, but they will make peace with it if it's not working they understand maybe god has some other plans or it's not there in my destiny if it's not there how can i claim that right but a person with a bad jupiter will be very much obsessed with you know controlling and you know like uh, criticizing, trying to force things, you know. <laughs> because he believes he is God. So it is very frustrating, you no, know, for a person who feel who believes he is God, because God means done. <laughs> Just you do this and it's done. But it doesn't work like that. So then he's very frustrated. So the the lower your Jupiter is, the lower is your conception of God. The higher your Jupiter is, the higher is the conception of God. So then you can accept things because you know maybe God has a better plan. You know, Not in terms of religious thing, but uh, you will kind of make peace with it. Even if they are atheistic, I have seen people, atheists with good Jupiter. Yeah, I failed in the exam. Yeah, maybe I should have studied better. I'll try next time. It's like that. So generally they are like, generally they will want to not blame everybody all the time. They may blame themselves sometimes, but that is not uh, on a very derogatory sense, you know, that, oh, I am like this, I am like that, but they will take responsibility. 
So Jupiter, a good Jupiter is basically an ideal human being, in short. Final thoughts like that you would like to add um, to the relationship or remedies or anything like that that could be helpful to people? Uh, so one last thing I would like to add from numerology. This is very important. I have seen this always working. Uh, especially with two numbers, with four and five. This is very important. So if a person has number four in the date of birth, it is good if the other person also has four. Because the number four always comes with problems and troubles. Like recently, one of my friend was here. Uh, he has a lot of fours in his date of birth. <laughs> And then uh, I was making something for him for eating, you know, some Indian dish. And it's a dish which I've been making from last 20 years. And it has from last four or five years, you know, I'm like, yeah, just make it and it's done. Because I have gained so much expertise because I've been making it from last two decades. Who wouldn't get that expertise? <laughs> but then he came. And then... You have to make it and keep it overnight and do the remaining the next day. And when he came, I <laughs> I opened the bowl and I saw, my God, what, what the heck is this? <laughs> this is completely crazy. <laughs> so, so when you have a lot of force in your date of birth, you, you are somehow things will not happen in the first attempt. So then I had to make it again and I had to tell him I will feed you the next day. So now if the man has this and the girl doesn't, then the girl will feel, oh, what is going on in my life? Always problems after meeting this person. <laughs> but if she already has four, it's like, oh, it's normal. <laughs> Oh, they rejected your application. Mine is rejected five times. Send again. <laughs> it's only two times, man. I'm rejected five times already. Chill. Life's good. Apply. It will happen. <laughs> so she can't. Uh, then if she has four, she'll be okay with it. She'll be like, yeah, okay. Four people means... There, there are sometimes the nose is blocked, sometimes this is blocked, sometimes the eye is not working, sometimes the ear is not working, sometimes the police is behind you, sometimes the government is behind you. Always somebody is behind you for some problem or the other. So then you are fine with it. And similarly is with number five. Number five is the number of uh, savings. Okay. People who have too many five, they are uh, kind of uh, miserly. So now, if, if 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 the man has like five, so he's born on 5th of May, 1955, my God. Four fives. He wants to save every cent, forget dollar or you know, every penny actually, not even cent. And then he's married to a girl. This girl has number six and number four. That's it. Within 48, hour, 48 hours, they'll separate. Because whoever has number six is obsessed with luxuries. Not obsessed, but the person wants, you know, luxury, this, that, you know. Like for a normal person, you go to their house. It will be like very normal. It's like a normal house. You go to somebody who has six. My God, their house will be like very well decorated. A lot of paintings will be there. Music will be there. There will be fragrance. There will be nice food. There will be... You know, you will feel like, wow, this is like a hotel. And then the wife, the girl will say, oh, we'll go to this, you know, Switzerland. We'll go to this five-star hotel and we'll stay there. And this fellow born on 5th of May, he's like, I mean, honeymoon, that's out of question. I, I have to spend like, you know, $10,000. How can I do it? I'll die if I do it. So this fellow wants to work the next day morning of his marriage and she wants to go to Switzerland for like, you know, 20, 25 days. So can you imagine the level of incompatibility they will have? So if somebody has four, 
find somebody who also has four and with six also if you have six it is good if the other person also has six uh, but with five especially i have seen if both of them have five they are very happy they are managing their money it's like you know uh, they won't tell anybody but you know they have a big bank balance you can see it very clear <laughs> i mean i can see it as an astrologer i don't say it but if both the husband and wife has then oh yeah very good they will keep telling others ah i don't have money you know i just have 200 dollars in my bank you know i wish if i had money i would have gone you know but they have big huge stock investments crypto and all this because they are pumping all the money there that is why their bank account is empty so a person who has six or four will also have an empty bank account and a person who has five will also have an empty bank account but the but the difference is <laughs> person who has like six two four and all this they they their bank account is actually empty and a person who has five their bank account is empty because they have real estate they have you know gold crypto bonds this and that that's why they have no money in the bank because the bank doesn't pay you interest that's their reason why they don't keep money in the bank <laughs> so people who have these similar numbers they can do very good uh, and sometimes it can happen a person has uh, five and the wife has six it can be okay uh, so sometimes the wife uh, or the other way around you know if the man has six he will be like you know spending on watches cars and all this you know and if the girl has five, you know, then she'll be like, hey, why are you spending money? Hey, don't do this. Don't do that. So it can also be favorable. But if it is like very extreme, you know, then we need to balance out the energies because these are fundamental incompatibilities uh, which cannot be changed and which can create serious issues. Like, you know, I saw one article that 70% of the marriages are like the cause of divorces is money, basically. <clears throat> so i am seeing the number five and number four they are very important so if both of them have four it is excellent and if both of them have five it is excellent or you don't none of them have five none of them have four then also it can work okay but if one has the other doesn't uh then there can be problems and we need to see then and then if astrology wise the upcoming 50 years are very good from a dasha perspective then they will be criticizing cribbing and yelling at each other but they will stay married okay they will say ah he's spending money she's spending money they'll keep criticizing they'll call up their friends and say oh my life has become hell with this girl you know she likes spending i'm earning she's spending <laughs> but because in astrology their dashas are positive for marriage they will stay married but they will uh, keep feeling this pinch all the time <laughs> yeah so i guess uh compatibility is like a very big topic and you know there are a lot of things we can discuss uh, but at the end uh, it is all depending on just one thing your horoscope and your upcoming dashas of 40 50 years that is the ultimate deciding factor if that is good everything is good if that is not good then other things become very important because then you have to see you know if the marriage married life is not good then on the top if their nature is also extremely opposite then it they will split in the first year itself yeah that's all for my side and